Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me um, on tonight's continuing education. We are going to talk about coriander essential oil tonight. And this continuing it is the first and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And I want to help you guys understand more about your essential oils. Sometimes I'm learning more about them as well. It's not just you. So I'm educating myself when I have to dig into something. But tonight, let's talk about coriander because coriander is one of those that can help with a mirror of different issues like digestive issues to di uh, helping us with blood sugars and skin and everything. So we're gonna go into a lot more of that, but coriander on the emotional side of things is your essential oil for integrity. But let's really look at essential oils in the first part. Why would we even consider using essential oils? And then why is there why is there such a hype about essential oils? Well, first off, essential oils gives us a quick response time. So if you've ever had a headache, and a lot of people do, and you go get to the medicine cabinet <clears throat> and then you reach for whatever it is that it is that you're looking for to help with that headache, whether it's Advil or aspirin, whatever that looks like for you, <clears throat> how long are you waiting? for it to help you with your headache because it's got to get to the digestive system and then it gets into the bloodstream and then it gets to where it's supposed to go and you hope that it's going to work, right? So let's look at essential oils that can give you a very quick response and be in your um, bloodstream within 30 seconds. Now I know that seems like Utterly ridiculous, right? Because 30 seconds, oh my goodness. Really, it does. Um, so within 20 minutes, your entire body, every single cell has been affected or been, uh, it, that chemistry of that essential oil has helped every single cell. Because one drop, of an essential oil gives you trillions of molecules within that one drop, right? And we have billions of cells in our body. And so those billions of cells gives us a lot less than that trillion, right? So that's where it comes into. And I know that even in the beginning for me to even think how that could even be, it's like, that's amazing in itself. So if we think about that, and that quickness that we get for helping whatever is at the um, within our within us right now, what we need now, and instead of waiting, we have something that will actually help us now. We don't have to wait for that twenty minutes or longer. Okay, so that's part that's part of the purpose of using essential oils that help us get to something a little more quicker. So let's look at coriander with the integrity of and the mis with the emotional use of uh, using essential oils. Now, I know a lot of you out there are thinking, does it really help for us emotionally? Why, absolutely, because how many times have you smelt something, if you like it, and it and you're like, what is that? You're asking, old, oh, or maybe it smells like fresh baked bread. Have you ever come into a kitchen and you're like, oh my gosh, that smells heavenly. But have you ever smelled something you don't like? So it changes our moods instantly. And that's where essential oils come into. And they are safe, non-toxic, and we know that it is chemical free. So when we look at emotions, emotions if we don't keep our emotions in check, it creates stress. Stress creates even a mirror of other health issues, especially if you're on a consistent stress level. And it can be a little bit or it can be a whole lot. It doesn't matter. Stress is stress. And it, cre it creates a chemical soup within your bodies. And so that 
can lead to other issues of the body. So think about that. So we want to control our negative self by um, self-betrayal and we want to be conforming. Um, those are the negative that we want to stay away from. And that's what coriander will help us when it comes to the, um, uh, the emotional part of that. So it's helping us be true to ourselves and help with that integrity and that inner guidance. Now, how would you use that? Two ways. One, this little bottle, this is a 15 mil bottle. You just take the lid off and smell it, or you can put it on the back of your neck. You can put it on your pulse points. You can put a drop in your hand, rub it around and smell. So that is how we use our essential oils, aromatically with the nose, topically on us, and even behind the ears too. And some people like to put it right here by the nose. So it just depends on you. And coriander also can be used internally. So this is coriander. It meets the GRAS standard, which is G-R-A-S, um, at the FDA, meaning that we can use this internally. Um, <clears throat> one drop goes a very long way. Remember those trillions of molecules within one drop of your essential oil can go a long way. Now, if you ever get essential oils in your eyes, don't use water because water is a driver. So what you, because I know, what you're thinking, oh, we're supposed to get wa water, we're supposed to get it out of our eyes. I know that that's what we learn, but that's not what we're gonna do this time around. We're gonna wait and let it dissipate because it will go away. I promise you, you won't go blind, but <laughs> you want to either put like a fractionated coconut oil or olive oil, anything fatty that you have, even if it's milk or yogurt, you know, um, you can put that, close your eyes and put it over the eyes and that will help it dissipate but it will go away give it about 10-15 minutes and you'll be fine and yes you're going to tear up so you want to close your eyes because tears are water correct so we don't want to do that as much as possible so keep that in mind now I mentioned something about blood sugars and a lot of people are not familiar with coriander, but let me tell you what the most of the industry does when it comes to coriander and cilantro. So coriander happens to be the seeds of the cilantro plant. When most of the industry, especially over the counter um, oils that you get, um, even though it says coriander or even cilantro, it is the whole plant distilled versus separating the seeds versus the leaf. Cilantro should be the leaf part and coriander should be the seeds, period. Because there's different chemistries of each. And so when we are looking for something, we want to make sure that it is specific to what it says on the bottle. Nobody has to tell you that. They can, they can put cilantro in this same bottle because they ground up all the cilantro and the seeds together and then did their um, this distillation that way. But no, that's not the way it should be. It should be separated. So keep that in mind because we want to make sure that our essential oils are doing the best job for us for the things that we are wanting to use it for. And if you've got something that's got everything all together, it's not necessarily going to be the best effective essential oil for you. So high blood pressure or even our um, blood sugars, uh, high blood sugars, I should say not blood pressure, if you use coriander and cinnamon together, because we already know that cinnamon is really good for helping reduce blood sugars. You can use 
three drops of each cinnamon and coriander in a capsule. So you get yourself an empty cap and you can get those anywhere, uh, Rite Aid, Walgreens, Walmart. You can buy them anywhere. You put three drops of each and you use that twice a day. What it does for you, it's going to vary because each of us have different chemistry. So the different chemistry, you know, what works great for me may not work great for you, but we do know we're going to reduce the blood sugars one way or the other. <clears throat> and then you can also, instead of doing it just twice a day, you can um, do something like that with the uh, capsule before you eat, <clears throat> because typically your blood sugars go up after you've eaten, because let's face it, most of us are not going to stick to the foods that we should be because we like it, right? And so the mind overrides what our stomach is wanting us not to do <laughs> or do. <clears throat> so we have to keep that in mind. I actually did a um, long time ago. I had someone that was desperate because they were going to lose their job for being diabetic and his numbers were so high that the doctor says, if you don't get this under control the next two weeks, then I'm gonna pull your CDL. And so they contacted me and I was like, well, this is what I gave them the protocol. And part of that was um, eating right. And the other part of that was the cinnamon and coriander together. And you know, the next time he went into his um, doctor to be checked, they were, astonished as to how lower, how much lower his, his blood sugars were. It worked for him, which I think is awesome. It may not, like I said, again, we're all different, so it may not work as well for you, but at least it's something that I, I know that it will do that. It's just a matter of how much. But what else can coriander do? We know that it's good for that because it's part of the cilantro plant. We can also use it for digestive issues. So are you someone that is constantly nauseated or do you have a lot of gas going on? How do you use it for that? Well, you can simply rub it on your belly, right? Or you can put it a drop in water or juice or anything that you're looking, you know, anything that's liquid and then you can drink it because remember, you can take it internally. So because of that, we know we can um, put it in the capsule and use it that way. But if you want a quicker response, put it in a shot glass with whatever liquid that you want. One drop, that's all you'll need. And for gas, it really does make a difference because how many times have we gone out to eat um, and or we've eaten something that has a lot of carbohydrates and then we get really gassy or we've had too much fried foods and we have all that grease that ends up making us very gassy as well. So this is one, this is an option for those that don't like things like the digestive and have the fennel in there which smells like black licorice. We have options. So if you like the smell of something, you're gonna wanna use it, right? But if you don't like the smell of it, you're not gonna use it. It was just point blank. Um, we can apply it to skin irritations. This is where you have to decide if you want to use this particular oil neat, meaning that straight out of the bottle, or if you want to mix it with fractionated coconut oil, which is our favorite carrier oil. So carrier oil is simply another oil, not an essential oil, but an oil to blend our essential oil with for two reasons. One helps it helps me put it on my skin and it goes farther, okay, easier to apply. And the evaporation of me placing it on my skin doesn't, it keeps it from evaporating off my skin very quickly. So it will, so it can get in there and soak into the skin. And fractionated coconut oil is has small molecules and will soak into the skin very quickly, not like your vegetable oil or avocado oil, um, all those, or, or olive oil, 
they don't soak into your skin, okay? Because they're too greasy. They have very, very big molecules and so they don't do that. You can do the same thing with people that have um, neuropathy going on. Um, you can apply it because for muscle support and the nervous system support, if an awesome for that, but you can also as put that in a capsule as well to help with neuropathy and the same thing. You can use an empty capsule, you can drink it in water and use, you know, use your discretion and decide, do you want to do just one drop or do you want to do two or three drops? And it's a great appetite suppressor. And the same thing with there, take it internally or just simply smell it. I know the smelling does really keep you from not wanting to eat something. It can. And we have a lot of essential oils for that, even to stop, stop smoking. Yeah, I know that, that one sounds kooky too. It all does, right? Because it's like, who would have ever thought that something like this could help you with things like that or an appetite suppressant, okay? Or like, you know, if you've gone out to eat and do you feel like something has happened? Um, your digestive system is completely out of whack. Coriander can come and be the rescuer for you. It's also good with um, helping boost your energy level. Same thing, put it in your hands, cut, smell it. That's all you need to do. Um, you can also apply it to the bottom of your feet for energy. Now, something that a lot of people will do is like at nighttime, put it on your feet at night to re-energize your feet, your whole body while you sleep. Because when we sleep, that sleep is to help us reboot. Kind of like turning your computer off now and then or updating it. We have to let our bodies rest and rethink and rejuvenate itself so that come next morning, I can go in there and do what I need to do, right? So this particular oil has the main constituent in it is linalool, which is something that it's called linalool, L-I-N-A-L-O-O-L. And so when you look that up, because I know you're gonna want to, Find out what that specific compound in that oil does for you. And Daylene has her hand up. Okay, Daylene. Oh, you want to unmute yourself? Okay. Does it um, detox? Well, do can you do a detox with it like you do with um, cilantro? Does it work the same way, pulling the metals out of your body? Um, it does, but cilantro oil itself is the better of the two to do that. So I would look at that as a, you know, how, how badly do I think I need it? How often have I done it before? Um, if I feel like I've got a really bad issue of, or bad something going on with metal detoxation uh, or metal, um, I would use the cilantro myself but then again use both well i was curious because they're from the same plant mm -hmm. you know oh yeah, they both, know. yeah they both will do the same it's just that um the, there's not as much linalool in um cilantro as there is in um in the coriander back here let me look i have i have a book in front of me here let's see what does, let's see. Oh yeah. In fact, um, completely different. So the main constituents in cilantro are uh, decennial. So there's not, the linalool is not in there. So that's why there's a difference in how they, they work for us. The great question, yeah. And, you know, um, coriander is also found in our digestion blend. 
It's also in, um, let's see, what are the other blends? Um, the children's grounding blend. And then the, um, there's another blend. Of, it'll come to me. Um, but it's in several blends because of what it does for us. But mostly um, it, you're, you're looking at the, that little all in there and what it does for you. Um, and it can, we can blend it with clove, uh, ginger, neroli. Now neroli is a very interesting oil and then also peppermint. And if you've never heard of neroli oil before, neroli is from the bitter orange tree. And it actually comes from um, the, um, the stems and leaves of, the, of that tree. So you get the oil, which is our wild orange, and you get neroli, and then you also get pedigree. Pedigree comes from the bark, um, which is really interesting in itself. Three different oils in one tree, which is crazy, totally crazy. I love that. Okay, um, and you know, no, okay, so here's an interesting thing. So some of us tend to, well, our body odor uh, is a little bit more um, loud than others. So coriander, can be an oil that you can take internally to help with that, to help regulate it a little bit better so that you're not quite as bad. Um, and then kind of, and you could do it in a capsule and I would suggest up to three um, drops of the essential oil. And again, in liquid or a capsule um, and take that once a day. And it's always fun to keep track of the way you were versus when you start something like using essential oils or anything, what is your body doing differently? Take note and tell people, let them know what you're doing and let them know what it's done for you because maybe somebody else out there needs that too. Maybe, maybe it's... Um, your brother's, uh, your brother's friend or mom's friend, whoever's friend, someone's going to need, may need that. And I think that's where we should all go. And then I have another, oh, let's see. What else can we get here? Okay. Um, oh, and you can also use milk or you can use honey as well when it comes to um, that one. And a caution is when you're using essential oils, be careful when you're using anything on your children. And then coriander is, is uh, recommended that you do not use coriander on children under the age of six. Um, and then, um, make sure that you're always diluting your essential oils with children. And why would we do that? Well, I heard, you know, earlier I was saying that it will help in applying to skin, right? But by diluting it in no means makes that not um, be effective. It just is blending the essential oil with a carrier oil so that we are making sure that that little body has some safety issues going on. And that's what we're doing because it's going to, you're gonna get the same result, but it's gonna dissipate a little bit differently within the cells. So always keep that in mind in one teaspoon of carrier oil to one drop of essential oil is usually adequate, but now if they're even smaller or younger, then we may want to dilute that just a little bit more. And you can always find a dilution chart if you Google doTERRA and dilution chart for children. There are plenty of charts out there for you to, to look at or to print out and keep 
handy so that you have that. Even for our pets, same thing. There's dilution charts out there. And yes, I use these on my pets all the time. Um, not necessarily coriander, <laughs> but there's a, plenty of others. And I really love the um, kids, the kids collection for using on my animals because they're already diluted and they have, uh, they're in a roller bottle. So they're easy application. Okay, uh, what else can I tell you? Um, historically, coriander has been used for uh, measles, uh, toothaches, and painful hernias. So there's another option for you if you know someone in those, uh, and with those issues, it might be something for you to, to think about. Um, it's also been used for gout, poor circulation. So we talked about neuropathy, um, oily skin. Hmm. Now we can use the essential oils in our hair or on our scalp. You can simply put it and massage it into the, the scalp. which makes it nice. Or if you really like the smell of something, just put it in your hair. It's a great way to smell it all day long. And it's good for your hair. If anything is good for your hair, right? Well, not anything, but a lot of things are. Um, let's see. So if you know someone that suffers from a lot of uh, blackheads, then this is a uh, an essential oil that you can put on meat to all of that, or you can simply make, um, like put a couple of tablespoons of uh, carrier oil and put a couple of drops of your um, coriander in there and then go along and do all of the blackheads and see if that doesn't help lift them out. Um, many other things that we can do with these, uh, these essential oils. And again, coriander, if you are, not sure if it's been completely mixed with your cilantro, then always trust where you're getting your essential oils from. I do know that doTERRA is the most tested when it comes to essential oils. And so we wanna make sure that that testing doesn't go wasteful because there are 106 studies out there of coriander. In fact, did I bring that in here? I probably didn't. Um, but there are many, many studies out there and I really appreciate um, where doTERRA goes and finds more for us so that we know that we have a essential oil that is safe, pure, and we don't have to worry about whether or not we're really getting what it says on the bottle. And besides that, when you get doTERRA on the bottom of the bottle, there will be an expiration date, okay? But let me tell you, if you have an essential oil bottle that goes beyond that expiration date, please don't throw it out. It's still good. The reason why there is an expiration date is because when you have a company I mean, I don't care that's any company that if you've got something new that you're bottling and it has to be tested every single day, uh, excuse me, every year. And so every year when it's tested, if that potency is still there, you get to go out one more, one more year, more, one year more. So keep that in mind because a lot of people think, oh, I got to get rid of it because it's past this expiration date. No. It's just something the FDA makes people do or makes businesses do. It does not go rancid provided it has not been diluted or been adulterated, which a lot of times when you buy off of Amazon and places like that, you do not know for sure what you are getting, even though you think you might be getting doTERRA because there's no guarantee one way or the other because it's too easy to take the lid off this bottle and replace it. It's easy. 
So please, 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 please keep that in mind. If you really want to buy online, get your own wholesale account. But the other thing is that since it's tested so much, it's 106 different studies and they're published studies. They're not just out there in left field, but that, so don't think again about the expiration date, but there's also a number. Let's see if you can see that. Kinda, but there's numbers on there. So you can go to source, S-O-U-R-C-E, source to you, T-O, source to you.com. And you can plug in that number and you know exactly where that essential oil came from. I'm the grower, which I think is the best thing that you could possibly ever do. Um, and that is one thing I do stress about when it, when it comes to our friends, family, children, because pets, because we wanna make sure that there's absolutely nothing in that bottle that is toxic. Because too many times um, we overdo it and our friends, um, especially our animal friends suffer the consequences, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, so yes, 106 times it's been published and what else can I tell you? Um, let's see, I already told you about so the difference between cilantro and coriander. And oh, this is a fun little fact. It takes three pounds of seeds, three pounds of seeds to make approximately 15 mil bottle. So this bottle takes three pounds of seeds to make that much essential oil. Pretty incredible, isn't it? <laughs> and the majority of what's in here, that little all, is pretty much about 60%. So there's your little fun fact which I wanted to give you because I, I have it here somewhere. I just found that here recently. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, oh, it's also good for your immune system. Help that immune system function correctly. And that's one that you can do either way. You can either use it topically or you can use it internally. It's up to you. Now, there's a lot of people out there that go, I will never use an oil internally. That's your choice. You can, it'll still benefit you by putting it on topically. Same thing. The only thing is not going straight to the, through to the digestive system. That's the difference. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything that they would like to add or anything that I've left out? If you do, just unmute yourself. Okay. Well, in that's the case, then I have nothing more. But if you guys want to join me the first and third Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific time, you can leave me a, co a comment anytime you see these videos. And if you have um, a great story, I'd love to hear them because I always want to hear more about what people are using and how it helped them. And you can find me on YouTube as well. And we will see you again in two weeks time on the third Tuesday, which I don't have my phone in front of me, which I believe, I don't know what that date is. So two weeks from today. <laughs> so 7, 14, 21st, I can count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the 21st i believe it is is when we will be back here again and i've been kind of going through abc and what do we have coming up oh cypress okay cypress is another one of those we don't talk about much so we will talk about cypress in two weeks I appreciate everybody being here. You can find me at naturalsforanimals.com, and that's the number four, and they both have an S, so naturals, 
number4animals.com. And we'll see you again soon. All right. Thank you. All done. Uh...